Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome to the official launch event for Archangel Fire Oracle. This is just so exciting. Um, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to a very special lady who is here tonight and her name is Severine and she is my partner in crime with these cards. She's my agent and my friend and Sevi, I love you so much. If you can raise your hand, um, <laughs> if you're in the room, people can see you. Thank you, my beautiful heart. Um, for first of all, for believing in me and my work and helping to support to get these cards out into the world. Um, and I want to say a massive, massive thank you to Sabine and all the team at Fintorn Press and Ashley and everyone at Inner Traditions and um, also Guillaume and all the team at Thre Daniel for our French edition. Um, I'm not going to try or maybe I should try and attempt to say the title Le Faux de Vin des Archanges. I don't know how good that was Sevi but anyway. <laughs> That's our French version. And um, we're also going to be published in Russian, potentially Spanish and Estonian. And hopefully these cards are gonna have wings all over the world. And that just blows my mind. Um, I, I just wanna grab my notes for one second. <laughs> because I wanna make sure that I cover everything I wanna cover tonight. Um, so, this, uh, this deck has been, for me, about an 11-year project. Um, I, I've been working with the angels for a lot longer than 11 years, but the actual bringing together of the information that ended up being birthed as the Archangel Fire Oracle actually began as a column I used to write in Prediction Magazine when I first became the editor of Prediction. Actually, I was the deputy editor, I think, when I first started writing the column. And then it evolved and it unfolded over the years. And I went on a very big journey with the archangels. And it was always the archangels for me, whenever I would work with angels that would come to me and I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole of my own story because I want to delve in and help you to create your own story with these beautiful angels. So tonight is we're going to be talking about how to use the deck. And obviously I'm going to do a little demo opening. So this one's had its outer wrapper removed. Um, but you'll notice on the box that we have all these beautiful symbols, fire sigils around the edge of the box. And um, you'll also find that on the back of your cards, there is also the sigil. Also, it appears on the back of the book as a sigil wheel. And then it's on the back of all of your cards as well. Now the sigil in the very center is a, a sigil which represents the Archangel fire itself the essence of the fire of all of the archangels and the angelic kingdom. And then each, now I'm going to unveil this deck of cards. So when you get your deck of cards, it will come in the box. The box has a tray. The box also, the book has 144 pages and it, that was deliberate for the symbolism of the 144,000 faceted soul. It's 144 pages. So it is a book. It's not just a booklet. Um, and there's quite a bit of information in the book, including spreads that you can do. And each angel has either two or three pages of information with it. But there's quite a bit of information. You'll also find your sigil wheel inside the book here. So each angel has its own sigil. Now, these sigils are unique to this deck. They've never been used anywhere else. These are not archangel sigils that you will find anywhere else on the archangel uh, in the Archangel world and the Archangel market, um, these were channeled specifically for this deck and the messages that come with each Archangel in this deck. So the, the essence of each Archangel as it's come through with its particular message um, and the qualities that it holds for this particular deck. So by meditating on the sigil of the Archangel itself, you can be infused with that energy, with that essence. So sigils are a little bit like beings in and of themselves. They actually hold a consciousness. 
So the sigil, say, for Sariel will hold the essence of Sariel, but also his particular message and gift and the healing, the alchemical healing that he brings through in this deck. So if you want a quick fire without having to read the book and read the card and meditate on the card, you can just focus on the sigil and let the white light behind the sigil ignite the sigil and imagine that that sigil is traveling into your energy field and you'll receive a direct attunement to each archangel that way. It's like a, a quick way to work with it. Um, igniting sigils is not something new. They do use it in magical circles, um, but it is a very powerful way to bring in the consciousness of each of the archangels. Um, and we will do, we're going to do an attunement to the sigil wheel as the main meditation tonight. So we're going to go on a journey through the sigil wheel. Um, and it's kind of probably quite hard to see it with this lighting, but there are 40 sigils around the wheel, and that is the 40 cards in the deck. So another way that you can pick a card, which isn't in the book as to how to pick your cards, is to just gaze at the sigil wheel and see if you're drawn to any specific one of these sigils and then you can have fun hunting through the deck and finding the matching sigil for your angel that you're going to work with so that's another way that you can work with it when you get your cards you'll want to clear the pack so i always knock three times on the pack give it a blow sometimes i will use um Palo Santo, I light that up and I'll cleanse the whole box and the whole pack just to get just to clear off any of the manufacturing process or anyone else's energy. Um, I have endeavoured to uh, infuse this um, this deck with the intention that, that it's quite self cleansing anyway. So don't worry if you've forgotten to do that or you haven't done that. Um, this uh, this card deck is a card deck that is designed to help you become more aware of who you are, to align you to your own divine soul purpose, and to assist you and support you on the ascension uh, path or process or experience. I mean, we're already there, really. Um, and so it takes you on a journey through all of the rainbow rays. Well, not all of them. I mean, if to do all of them, it would be a long process indeed. But you can see here that the frames are... They're a gold frame, but each card has a color wash at the bottom. And these are the suits. There are 17 suits to this deck. And the, the they start with the black ray, which also contains all of the colors of the rainbow. And as far as I'm aware, there's not any other angel deck currently on the market that does talk about the shadow and the importance of doing shadow work and looking into our shadow and embracing our darkness. Ascension isn't really about a war of light against dark. It's about transcending duality and it's about embracing both our dark and our light and opening a new field of love. And this includes external to us, internal of us. It's about really understanding that the world is a mirror and if we can love and forgive and work through whatever is being presented to us, both on the collective level and on the, the individual level, that really is the path to true healing. It's the path to true transcendence. And we're all being faced on this planet with a heck of a lot of discomfort right now. We are smack bang in the middle of the ascension of the revelations, which is basically just the great revealing, the great revealing of many truths. And I, it's not my intention to go down any rabbit holes or to delve into differing opinions or anything here tonight because we're all coming into our own truth and your truth might be different from my truth but this deck is about helping you to get to your own truth and to really understand what it is what what is your core desire what is the 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 core aspect of you what makes you tick to to help you release anybody else's authority or opinion or agenda so that you can really align to the most pure aspect of yourself so that you can come home to yourself and um so yes so we begin with sariel and then we have divine mother zafkiel and some of these angels so i want to tell you how each of the archangels for this deck came to me so some of them are familiar ones such as Michael and Gabriel 
but basically they they started to come to me one by one and I would often hear their name um, I would experience the the color rays that they they operate on coming into my energy field um, I would often spend a few days working with the angel but I would often find that as a result of working with each of the angels as they came to me my my physical 3D life would go through a very rapid transformation. And life just hasn't been the same. I mean, 11, 11 years, there's significance in that number. We all know about the 1111. I've been changed in ways I never expected working with these archangels, working with all of the archangels, really. And there's way too many archangels to publish in one deck. Um, but these are the ones that came to me for this particular deck. So. Another, um, once you've cleared your pack, you'll want to shuffle your cards. I'm not going to shuffle this deck because this is actually Tony's deck that I bought for him. So I don't want to mix up his cards because he hasn't had a chance to play with them yet. Um, and I promised him that I would sign them. Um, so I have got, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> I have got an already shuffled deck here. And um, so, first thing, a really lovely, so I have a, a dear friend called Tiffany Crisara, who is a tarot maven. She's absolutely amazing. And she works alchemically with the tarot. And um, one, of the, one of the little um, card processes that she taught me that I just didn't know, I'd never thought to do actually, it's just to shuffle your deck. And just ask, you can just ask which card wants to come to you. And you might either get a card flip out or you might just want to stop shuffling and just take the card from the top. But before you look at your card, you want to hold it to your heart. And you're going to ask to be infused with the energy of the card, just to feel the energy of it. You might want to put a hand on it. Just feel the energy of the card, first of all, and just see if you can feel what the card is trying to show you in your feeling awareness. Now, <laughs> immediately, I'm getting a lot of heat in my palms. I'm feeling as though the card is blazing with heat and light. Now, it is a fire oracle. It is an archangel fire oracle. So that makes sense to me. But I'm seeing a lot of gold and yellow, a lot of fire, a lot of heat, and a lot of warmth. And I'm being given... So you can imagine that the card is giving you a word or giving you a message. And the way to work with all of this is to use your imagination. So as I hold it to my heart, I can actually feel the card radiating oh, beautiful golden warmth, almost like it's a laser going right into the very core of my heart. The word I'm being given is glory, oh, is glory. So think about an area of your life. I'm getting a lot of solar energy, a lot of sun energy. And I'm thinking about the sun as a, a portal to our divinity. I'm getting a lot of imagery of the Merkaba. But I'm just feeling warmth and heat and light and safety. I'm thinking, uh, thinking about my, my inner child. And it reminds me of growing up in Australia in the warmth of the Australian sun, under the Australian sun, as I tune into this card. And I'm just going to see now, it's, it's, it's a great idea just to see if you can get as much information as you need from this card. I'm actually seeing a wagon and a big wagon wheel. Um, and, it's, and then you can sort of just wait and look at your card and see if there's anything in the card huh, that actually brings, um, that actually correlates with the message you've been given. So I've pulled Yehudiel, who is one of the angels of the gold ray. So there's the golden sun that I was feeling in my heart. Um, he works on the gold, one of the golden rays. He's an angel of leadership. And you can see his feathered crown looks like the rays of the sun here. He's actually depicted as an Easter Island um, indigenous warrior. And he has the sacred heart over his heart. So there's the heat and the warmth going into the heart. He's all about stepping into your leadership, your power, but also aligning to your purpose. Um, 
And Easter Island, interestingly, is like a microcosm of the whole planet. There's a lot of symbolism there in Easter Island. But, I'm, you know, it's connected to the Pacific. And I was thinking of Australia, which is home, but which is also in the Pacific. Um, you could delve down into the symbolism as much as you want. But he is really about connecting with your own divine authority and bringing that authority in through your works. Particularly, he's great for your career, your purpose, stepping into the, the role and, and owning who you are and allowing your purpose to align with your career. Um, when I first encountered Yehudio, I'd never heard of this angel before, but I was in Ibiza actually many years ago on a retreat and I was being given, I think, a healing treatment of some kind. I was lying on a therapy bed. And I heard the name Yehudiel just come through me like a gong and then all of this heat and light and messages about my work and how my work was changing and fair enough. Sure enough, it did. And I stepped into the role of the editor of Prediction at the time. So very beautiful. The golden ray, it really is a solar ray. So that's another way that you can work with your cards to feel them before you before you look at them, before you read them. Um, a, uh, I'm trying to think. Another great way of working with the deck is to go through. And so I always suggest like one of the things I've put in the book is that you can work through this deck from card number one all the way through to card number 40 and do it as a linear alchemical journey and spend like a day or a week or a month working with each archangel and its energy and seeing what blessings it brings into your life and how it helps you. Now, many people will probably look at, say, the first archangel, and I've actually had um, a friend comment and say, oh, isn't that angel, isn't that a dark angel, isn't that, isn't that a fallen angel? I've had comments like this. But however you perceive it will be a message or a lesson or a blessing for you. So I suggested to him, well, maybe he's helping you to face your fears because I don't necessarily believe in the fallen angel idea. I think we have a lot of belief systems, but that's just my opinion. Um, there are things that exist on multiple different levels, but in my experience with Sariel, he brings the light in the darkness. And if you actually look into the truth of uh, the angel Lucifer, he was known as the light bearer. And that image, that that um, angel, that angel's purpose and message has actually been completely distorted and a lot of fear has been projected into it but I didn't include that one in the deck because I thought that might be a step too far but Sariel is actually also a light bearer and one who helps us to find the light within our darkness um, because at that divine level everything is part of us um, I think about you know that the yin and yang symbol even in the darkest of dark, there is the potential for great light, for that spark of light to come in and illuminate and to change it. And even in the lightest of light, there is the potential for darkness. And that's the same with each of us. We all have choices. So in owning that we have the potential for wrongdoing, it helps us to find the balance to make the right decisions on that daily basis. So Sariel can help you to not be afraid of your shadow, um, to embrace it, but to also bring light into it so that you can heal it. Because when we know what we need to heal, it's easier to heal it. And this is what's happening collectively on the planet. We've got a heck of a lot of shadow rising to the surface of our awareness. But once we know about it, we can help to heal it. That's when the forgiveness begins and starts. So moving through the cards, you might want to just pick one at random and work with that one or there's various different spreads but another way that I really like to work with these cards is to manifest with them so say you want to manifest a romantic partner you could pull out Archangel Shamuel the angel of love and you could use this pop popper on your altar call on this angel these cards are not just messages they are doorways to these angels. When you pull the card, the angel is with you. So ask, Shamuel, please bring me the love of my life. Or if it's to do with um, 
friendships or relationships in general, or you just need a little bit more self-love, what the or perfect angels, you can pop her on your altar, you can stick her on your vision board, um, you can sleep with her under your pillow, all of these different ways that you can work with the cards. Say you're really in need of a win, you're in a competition, or you need a victory, um, and there has to be, you know, in this world of duality in some realms, there has to be a, a victor and there has to be someone that doesn't doesn't come first in some realms. Um, we all win eventually, though. We Ultimately, we all get the lesson or the blessing. But a good one to call on your power and your, your victory energy is Gal Galio. So you can see yourself riding in on your chariot. There's my wagon wheel that I saw before. Riding in on your chariot and being victorious. Um, and, you know, you can combine these with other manifesting techniques, you know, ask them to preside over your manifesting techniques. Um, that's another way of doing it. You can even create an entire path working. I, I do like timelines, so I, I can draw out timelines on pieces of paper and put dates on them and then put specific angels next to them that will represent where you want to be, where you want to get to. So their particular message. So, for example, you know, I, I, Sandalphon is a wonderful angel to do with music and I've just pulled him now. I went for a singing lesson this afternoon and I was thinking today, gosh, I need to do more with my singing. I really want to start recording and, and putting out some chants and some things. So he would be a good one for me to, to ask to come and help me with my music and maybe create a timeline where I can put Sandalphon as the ultimate goal, but then thinking about other things that could help me on the way. Rad Uriel, for example, is the writer the recording angel who creates the baby angels is a great one for um, muses, the poets, the writers. So I could put him somewhere on the path to help me write better. All kinds of things. Any of the Blu-ray angels are great for the throat chakra, the voice. So there's multiple different ways that you can work with this, creating a path working. Um, also, if there's, you know, I've had so many people tell me that, these angels remind them of people that they know. So a bit like the Significator card in the tarot, if there's somebody that you know and you want to send them healing, you can pull a card that will represent them. So I pull Metatron and I think of my dad and because he's a, a wise elder, he has a mustache as well. And I think, well, I would love to send some healing for my dad. It's his birthday tomorrow. So if I pull out this card, I think of my dad receiving all his gifts and his, um, his life being illuminated and for him to step into a, a higher timeline where he can feel held and safe and healing um, happen for him. And he is a healer. He's a doctor. So it's got the, the DNA over his heart. And you can send prayers um, to loved ones and ask the particular angel to go to your loved ones to help heal them as well. That's a good one for manifesting is uh, Sachiel or Sakiel. She's got all the, the coins. She's very much an angel of abundance and good luck, but also she's good for charity and wealth. Um, she's a wonderful angel to call on. I'm trying to think of the other ones that I have written down. Um, yes, the sigil wheel. There's so much more to do with the sigil wheel. Um, you can use the sigil wheel. So say you have a crystal. Here we go. My grandmother really wanted to be present tonight. This is her cardigan. This is the heart, crystal heart that I gave her uh, many moons ago. And when she died, it came back to me. And it was actually attuned to the angelic kingdom. And I've got a, I made a video about this heart actually. But a good way to cleanse your crystals and to attune them to the angelic kingdom is to pop them on top of the sigil wheel as well. Um, and depending on which angel is underneath, you can also infuse that angel's energy, but you will also get all of the angels energy in here um, I would like to get some altar cloths created with this wheel on it as well at some point because I think it would be nice to have it bigger um, or even one to put behind me for my zoom calls but um, it's wonderful um, another way to work with this is literally just to let your gaze settle on the central sigil 
and then close your eyes and journey through it into through the portal into the angelic kingdom of light and just see who you meet on the other side and notice that all of the the rainbow rays are present here so i'm just going to open the floor to if anyone wants to ask any questions at this point or make any comments um I would love, love, love to hear your comments and your questions. Um, got some lovely comments here. Everyone saying hello. So nice to see you all. Um, oh, thank you, Sevi. Hi, Maria. Oh, so lovely. Oh, I love it. Shell, do what you got? Did you get your hoodie all? Fantastic. I love it. We're all in alignment in alignment it's fab um yeah the other thing about the sigils is you can see if the sigil itself has a different message the sigils will have a slightly different energy a slightly different consciousness to that of the archangel themselves um i kind of see them like a little bit like divine elementals they're like little consciousnesses of their own and they're quite sweet lovely friendly little beings a little bit like feel like they they kind of come in and zap us with the the, the angelic magic oh Susanna where does the word sigil come from gosh I don't even know <laughs> does anyone know that could share um we can google it <laughs> um yeah gosh I've never even thought of that no but I'll tell you what um when I think of sigils, I, I often think of symbols and the difference between symbols and signs. And I do a lot of work with symbols. And I always think that symbols tend to stand for something that we don't know. They kind of go beyond the logic. They open the doors to the realms of um, magic because they we can't attribute something definitive to them. It, we, they don't often have reference points. They're like the, the big question mark um yes they do look like light language they are light language really and that's the other thing you can you can ask to be um infused with them and they will they can activate your light language and that's the that's the point really it's to take you out of your logical mind and into the realms of light and magic um keep stretching your consciousness growing your consciousness expanding your consciousness and helping you to reach higher and higher levels of your your highest divine vibration really to bring you into your own truth your own alignment um and your own inner knowing and it also will help to um what happens is when you expand your consciousness and you keep asking that question who am i what am i here for what is my journey about what's the point of all this why 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 the proverbial question mark it actually helps to activate your dna and it helps to bring some of your hidden gifts to light. So the more we ask questions, I have always been an innately curious human being and it's got me into trouble sometimes, but it's also got me into truth a lot. And some of the things that might happen as we start to awaken to our own inherent gifts and our DNA starts to awaken, it is basically gifts and knowledge and wisdom that has been hidden is coming to light and it's coming to light within each of us within our akashic records and our soul records and a lot of information on this planet has been lost or hidden especially if we think about uh you know women's history we don't have a heck of a lot of women's history on this planet in the grand scheme of things and either it was deliberately withheld or hidden or it was lost or it wasn't deemed important enough but actually there's a heck of a lot of feminine history that is being rebirthed through the hearts and minds of the women of the priestesses who are now coming out remembering their other lifetimes um sharing their wisdom and knowledge and i know that you know as a channel um i don't know there are many others present with us here tonight and i'm very grateful for my sisters who you all to be here um that we're just remembering you know have you ever found yourself in a place and the story about the place just doesn't doesn't wash doesn't feel true we're coming into our feeling awareness i know that whenever i've been in egypt and been in the pyramids and many people have written about this now and all this truth is coming to light they've tried to discredit people that say it but that pyramid that those pyramids are not tombs there's no way they're initiation chambers they're awakening chambers 
I've been in places like Peru and Mexico and Guatemala and stood on those lands. And somewhere in my memory, there have been visions that have surfaced that are just like ordinary everyday memories, as though I was there yesterday remembering being there. These are some of the examples of the gifts that can start to awaken as you activate your DNA and expand your consciousness and really learn to trust yourself. These uh, archangels, the point of the archangel fire is pure power. It's your divine power, which is the power of love. And once you come into your power, you can't really be lied to. You can't be hoodwinked. You can't be bullied. Um, I've, you know, uh, historically been bullied, but have since been through a bit of an initiation to face that. And um, it's really interesting, actually. It feels significant because tonight when I was coming home from my singing lesson in preparation for the, this evening, a woman tried to bully me on the bus. <laughs> and I found it really interesting because it showed me, it was a real blessing from the universe because it showed me that, a huge old fear of mine has left me as a result of this initiation. And I'm sure a result of working with these cards and going through all the, the obstacles that Sevi and I have had to go through to launch the cards as well, because it's not always a light and fluffy journey when you're working with angels. They will kick you onto your path if you're not properly aligned with your path. But it was very interesting. This woman tried to intimidate me on the bus. I wear a, um, a mask exemption badge and she flicked it with her hand and she said you haven't got a disability <laughs> and um I don't know what came over me I believe it was Sekhmet <laughs> and I just looked at her and I so I just went I was just incredibly calm and I lifted my badge up very very calmly and held it right in front of her face and I said I think you'll find it says exactly what disability I have if you read the card and um, she completely changed her whole demeanor and she sort of shrunk back and went oh no I wasn't I wasn't being mean to you oh uh, hi hi my name's so and so and it completely backtracked and I and I'm sure that whatever power I was channeling was just the power of love it wasn't I wasn't intimidating her back I was just standing my ground and being very matter of fact but it was fire it was fire power and that is love really love um somebody is asking about rick bl oh and zakario okay yes i need to talk to you about where some of the inspirations for the cards came from because they showed me they they really showed me in the visions avelia my uh, amazing illustrator was incredible to work with because I would do really detailed mood boards for her and the symbolism would be shown to me and it would just come to me and it would just be perfect. Um, there is, I just need to find Zakariel's um, page because I need to remember. And he is the turquoise ray. So there is a, um, a minority group of Gnostics called the Yazidi people. And the Yazidi have historically been very persecuted. And um, they're actually, um, I'm just trying to find his card. They're a very small group. Um, and they actually believe in a galactic being can't remember what his name is the galactic being but he has peacock wings and I just loved that because I myself believe in galactic beings and have met many of them and I just loved the peacock wings it's like rather than being ashamed for your difference the peacock as a totem animal is all about strutting your stuff and really letting your your true colors shine in even in the face of fear and persecution these people are still standing their ground and upholding their beliefs and living their, living their truth. And I just thought that was so powerful. And Zachariel is an incredible angel to call on when you have nowhere else to turn, when you're really at that point of surrender and you really need an angelic intervention, when you don't have any other answers. And so in the book is this, this prayer that I channeled 
and I and I wrote this one many years ago. It was actually one of the ones that um, appeared in Prediction magazine. I feel like I feel let's read the prayer now because there's so many things we don't have the answers to on this planet at the moment, and we can only see. For some reason, we're being quite blinkered. We can only see quite a, a short way in front of ourselves at the moment, and so many are really facing the unknown in our personal lives, but also in our um, in our global life. This great unknown, this great shifting of timelines, and not knowing where the the future is going to take us. So, if you want, you can just close your eyes and and come into your heart. And just feel the words of the prayer and we call upon beloved Zakariel. Mighty angel of surrender and release, we hand over all our cares, worries, fears and doubts and all of our hopes, dreams and desires. Please lift all the burdens from our shoulders. Clear our minds of anything hindering us from receiving the clarity that we need. Please bring the best outcome to whatever situation we are facing. And here, I think we, we could put in a request for the highest and best outcome for the pandemic and anything um, surrounding that for the highest good of ourselves and for the good of all involved. We trust in you to bring about a swift and miraculous resolution which will occur in the perfect divine timing. We surrender ourselves to the will of the divine. We are ready to receive the blessings and miracles that you and the angels are gifting us with. And we ask that we easily come to recognize any gifts, blessings and miracles from all the situations that we face and from any miracles as soon as they arrive. We surrender, we surrender, we surrender. It is done, it is done, it is done. Thank you. And we send that out into the cosmos in to ask Zakariel to help us. And I also feel as well um, that as part of that prayer that we send a, a prayer to anyone that is being persecuted or that is facing harm that needs immediate and swift help at this time on the planet. Anyone who is in danger that needs intervention or help that, that could come. Um, so yes, Rick Biel. Rick Biel is um, a beautiful angel of com compassion, actually, and he's one of the angels that is presides over the Merkaba, which is our light body. So he's a fantastic angel to call on um, to anchor you into your multidimensionality and to do that through love. So to love every aspect of yourself again, but also to have compassion when it comes to other people, especially if you're struggling to hold compassion towards another person if someone's being cruel to you. Um, Rick Beal can help you to stand in the light of truth, to stand in your power, but also to be kind while you do that. So, again, that situation, I can't find him now, I found him before. Again, that situation um, on the bus this afternoon for me was, you know, one where I kind of see him holding his hand up and saying, I come in peace. <laughs> I come in peace. Again, it's about honoring your difference, honoring your uniqueness, acknowledging that there are maybe parts of you that you still have yet to explore. And I love it. I was doing a, a physical body healing process this afternoon for Spirit and Destiny, and I was talking about how we hold all of the the same stuff as the stars and the cosmos within our very cells and our DNA, our physical bodies are, are the universe. The universe is within us and outside of us. Um, so having that deep level of love and compassion for yourself can really help you to explore. If you follow your heart and follow your dreams, you can really explore your own inner magic and your own inner power. I love it. it. Reminds me of these are not the droids you're looking for. I love you, Steph. <laughs> awesome. Yes, very Star Wars. And it was really weird because he was the last. Um, he was the last card that we actually um, did the illustration for. 
And it was almost like, even though, and he's card number 11. So it was almost like the awakening, like he's not the last card in the pack, but he was the last one to arrive. And it's almost like the cherry on the cake. And here's our spaceman. Hello. <laughs> Community exists beyond the earth as well. Um, and and I, I, you know, we wanted to create a deck that was inclusive of everyone, fellowship. So you'll find in here there's elders, there are pictures of babies, there are different cultures. Um, so we've got a beautiful Indian woman here. We've got a lovely Russian circus tightrope performer, gender, gender neutral cards as well. Really wanted to show that, you know, and, and then it was really interesting because my sister sent me a message the other day and someone on uh, Instagram had posted, have you ever noticed how when you walk into a church, all the angels are white? <laughs> so I sent her a message and said, well, you know, here you go. There's some inclusive ones here. So we wanted to make sure that every, every, you know, as many as we could, cultures were included. And you even have the animal kingdom depicted here in uh, Caribbean is our cherubim. Um, also, it, it's um we've got a Kabbalah Kabbalistic uh, priest. Also uh, acknowledging that us, the light workers, the magic people, the alchemists, the healers, are one of the most persecuted minorities on this earth, and it goes very um, that seems to fly under the radar a lot. And uh, I. You know, while we don't, I kind of, I sit, I kind of sit with this quite a lot because it does need to be acknowledged. But then I don't feel like I want to put a label on it, put it in a box, and start going out, going, you know, justice for the light workers. But at the same time, it has happened, and that again, acknowledging it leads to healing. Um, so I'm just checking out some more. Um, oh, thank you, Trisha. Yes, yes, the twin Erin. The Twin Erin, um, I first actually heard of the Twin Erin when I was teaching Angelic Reiki and they were one of the, uh, some of the angels that you get attuned to at the end of that course and something about them sort of stayed with me. There's loads of other angels that have come through. They're actually in, I think there's a big book called the Dictionary of Angels and they feature in there, but they've come to me quite a lot and they've come to me as very very high vibration high ranking angels i believe that they're said to rank even higher than metatron but to me these are angels of justice and you'll see that i've um, depicted them as the blind justice and they're holding the sword of truth and also the um the wheat sheaf which is all about harvest reaping what you sow in the Egyptian culture, the goddess Mart weighs the heart against the feather. So to me, these are all about reminding us to stay in our integrity. And staying in your integrity can often be a tricky thing. Um, so to me, the Iran, you know, they kind of come in, they hold us to account and make us kind of toe the line. If, we, if we've been lying to ourselves about something, they make you really look at yourself, look at your patterning, you know, are you actually acting in integrity? Um, you know, acting out of integrity is not always so cut and dry. There's misbehaving, but then what if you, you know, for example, coming back to the bullying thing, you know, what if you historically have been bullied all your life? But on some level, when I realised that, I realised that, whoa, I've been enabling. I haven't been standing up for myself. And if I didn't stand my ground and stand, stand in my truth, I wouldn't be acting in integrity. So there's many different facets of this integrity. And again, it's personal to everybody. When you learn to really feel into your truth, what feels right for you and follow your own divine authority, to outsiders, some of your decisions might look absolutely balmy, but only you will know what is right for you and you will know what is right for you by the way that it feels. It will feel absolutely right. Your body will relax. It will feel like truth. And... Um, you know, if you go against that, the more the more we go into the ascension, the more we expand in our consciousness, it's almost like the more you get tested, you know, and, and you can't, you cannot go against 
your 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 inner compass, your inner north star, your inner um, your inner truth. Otherwise, you will absolutely feel it. Um, if I if I go against my my truth now, I feel ill, or I feel really just not right. So my body tells me it's like no, it's almost borderline goes into a panic. So it's very strong. Um, okay, you. Will you be inherently drawn to the archangels that represent your sun sign? Sometimes, not always, um, but I, I mean, and I haven't really um, categorized them in terms of astrology. I've more done it in terms of like you'll see that uh, in the booklet with the suits, there are star systems that correlate with each, uh, each suit. It'll say star and constellation here. Um, but that is actually the um, the higher galactic councils of light that I'm aligning it to. And I haven't depicted all of the ones that I work with, but quite a few of them came in. So, again, the angel is also um, working at that higher level with many star beings, many, many councils and federations of light. And you can call on these beings to connect you to them. And these are um, basically gateways, gateways to healing, gateways to ascension. You'll also find suggested colors, crystals. Um, essential oils but again these are just suggestions to help you raise up the frequency to that suit that you're working on but you can go with whatever you feel guided to um, in terms of your star sign um, you might find the angel connected to it in here i know zuriel this angel here is meant to be one of the angels of libra and i'm a libran but Raphael is also a libran angel and she is actually the energy that keeps the planets in orbit so she's an angel of balance and harmony um but keeping that that movement the balance of the the movement so yeah you might find that do you find uh nicola that you are um quite strongly drawn to the angels that represent your your sun sign do you find that that pops up quite a lot i do have a thing for raf i have to say i do love him he's a lovely one he's gorgeous um, just checking through to see if there's any other questions. Make sure I don't miss anyone's questions. <laughs> You're new to this, so you don't know yet. Yeah, I just, I just get. Um, well, check it out. Maybe, maybe do some research into what your your sun sign angels are and see if you're drawn to them. Um, but then, if you if you go through the deck, I'm I'm never one to kind of say that you have to work with this or that or that anything you know sometimes you'll you'll pull an angel and you might think oh the best angel for me to work with for physical healing at this time would be Raphael say I want an angel that's going to help me with um I guess boosting my immune system or if we're talking about pandemic and yet I go through the pack and I say right show me the right angel for me to work with and then I pull oh that's not Raphael. That's not what I was expecting. That's Tahariel. But Tahariel is an amazing angel for purification, for detoxing, for physical healing, because she she allows us to acknowledge the purest divine essence within us. So she's a great one for um, detoxification, for looking at what foods we're eating, eating the right foods, getting the balance, um, treating the body right in a nourishment she's a great one to work with so they sometimes won't be the ones you're expecting if you ask but you will always get the perfect um the perfect message for you if you say pull a card and you think hang on a minute that's got nothing to do with the question i was asking i don't understand you can always say you know give me a little bit more information and pull another card or two to back it up and again Hold the card to your chest, tune in, see what other information comes, try the sigil wheel. And the other thing you can do is I love doing um, wild writing or um, just um, automatic writing. So you can ask the angel to come through. How are you helping me at this time? What else do I need to know? Um, always use your imagination. We've been so taught in this culture that our our imagination, our intuition is not worth anything, but our imagination is the key to all of this. If you can imagine it, you know, if you were to close your eyes right now, 
and imagine there was a huge angel standing behind you and imagine what that angel might look like, what it might feel like to have that angel wrapping you in its wings and holding you. If you can imagine it, then it's happening. We're powerful co-creators. And I always extol the merits of our imagination. It's a little bit like lucid dreaming. You can also change things with your imagination. You can also, um, this is how we manifest. We imagine it. We do it every second of every day. We think about what am I going to eat to di eat for dinner tonight? We imagine it and then we go and cook it and it's there. We create it. So we do it in little ways all the time and we use it every second of every day. There it is, Metatron. Beautiful wings and beautiful light. Ah, gorgeous, Susanna. Yay, amazing. Okay, um, any other questions or concerns or um, uh, insights, sharings? I'm going to, we're going to do a beautiful meditation and uh, attunement very shortly. I'm just going to let lovely Callista in. Okay, well, what I thought I might do, we're going to have a little break. So we'll give you a break before we do the meditation. But what I thought I might do, I just want to make sure I'm covering everything here. Oh, gosh, yes, very important. Very, 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 very important point. The point of the whole deck. <laughs> the point of the whole deck that I haven't even spoken of yet is um, angels are part of you. They do exist as guardians and beings outside of you, but they also exist within you. They are the bridge in consciousness between our physical selves and our divine selves. And they are, you know, I see them as if we were talking about an angel mathematically, they would be the angle, the ratio, the relationship between us and the divine. And this is why sacred geometry to me really is a language of angels. It, it really it really does help us to understand them. They are the building blocks of creation. Um, they do exist in the light and, and all around us within every physical thing. There are angels within the seen and the unseen world. And the whole point of this deck is to help you to become more of your angelic self. So each of the processes in the, in the deck, the messages and the processes is great. We can use it for divination. We can use it for guidance. But the whole point is that you embody the gifts and the qualities of that angel yourself. Um, which brings me to one of the key ways to work with these cards and really the only way in my book to do any spiritual work, which is through love, through the heart, with the highest of intentions, so that any healing that you're doing for you, you also share that healing with everybody. You share that healing with the whole world. If I ever do any healing on myself, and sometimes even on my clients, if it comes up in the session, I always ask that whatever we heal or clear, that the potential for that be gifted to everybody. And um, that's really, it's really powerful. But as you work with the cards and as you do the processes, you'll find that there is advice in here on how to embody the angelic qualities, Ooh, the book on the floor, um, in your daily waking life. But only you can really know how to apply these lessons in your life. And I always just keep it in mind, you know, there's always some way that as humans we can, we can be better, we can do better, we can um, be more of that divine self and acknowledge that every aspect of our lives is sacred is beautiful is is divine and we're here to anchor heaven on earth and this is why the rainbow bridge the, the the journey through the cards it's about really saying yes to yourself and celebrating your humanness knowing that you are a divine human being you're not separate from it you are it and so these are just a little way there's so much more um so much more beyond this but this is just um you know, I just see these as doorways, as invitations for you to become even more of your true angelic divine selves. And as I've learned that that's not always about, you know, 
It's not about being a doormat. It's not about being so kind that you let people abuse you. It's about really knowing. That, I mean, I see it as three paths, love, wisdom, and power, and not to be afraid of your own power. Um, and ultimately, this deck helps you to come into your power. And that's the whole point of it. So we're going to do a, a meditation, a really lovely meditation, quite a deep attunement um, to the angelic kingdom of light. Um, and we're going to travel through the sigil wheel to do this attunement. But I'm going to suggest we take a short break before we do this uh, meditation process. Um, I was going to, before we do that, I digress. I was going to pull a card for the whole group tonight. Ah, high card. Okay, perfect. And I've drawn the Shekinah, which is the Divine Mother. And she really is the birther of worlds. She's co-creating, weaving the web of the world here. And her energy is so powerful. She really is about the unknown, really embracing our unknown, having the courage to, to just follow the calling to trust. Um, I always get the over, whenever she's around, I just get, you've just got to trust the process. What might be going on in your life may not make any sense at all but trust the process and trust yourself and let her move through you. When you let her move through you, obstacles just dissolve. It's a powerful thing because it takes a lot of courage. It does take a lot of courage because she does come, you know, she brings also brings the light and the darkness together and it's about creating whole new experiences. You might even find that working with her you leave behind who you thought you were and you just become a whole new person. And then you've got to find your feet again in the world and try to figure out who you are all over again. It does take courage, a lot of this work, but it is so beautiful and it will help you to uncover parts of yourself that you never knew existed and gifts that you never thought that you had. And um, it will help you to really embrace your vulnerability and your fragility as well as your power. So yes, I'm not going to waffle on for much longer. So I'm going to suggest that we take a, I was going to say 10 minutes, but they're suggesting 15 minute break. So um, it is, according to me, five past here. So 15 minutes by the time we get tea and have peas and um, just sort of ground ourselves in. You might want to grab a blankie or if you need to change position so that you're nice and comfortable and cozy, we're going to do a lovely long meditation. And um, for this meditation, it doesn't matter if you fall asleep or if you drift off or if you go somewhere else. Um, I just see it as a beautiful opportunity to relax and receive some deep healing and know that the angels will have you held. We're going to put some lovely... Um, shielding and protection so you can go as deep as you need to and really really relax into this and um, let this be time for you it's not that often we get to gift ourselves with time like this so um, I will pause the recording and I'll see you back here at 20 past and thank you again for joining me again if anyone needs to put any comments or questions um, I'll answer them when we come back from the break thank you so much Yeah, so just, um, oh, I'm just going to save it, that for the recording as well, that the sigil, the word sigil comes from the Latin sigillum or sigillum, meaning seal, and um, is used in magic to embody the consciousness of your desired outcome or creation. Okay, so think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover but no doubt maybe we will have to have another one of these next week because I'm sure that there'll be more information <laughs> that I'll need to share what I'm hoping um, is to have a series of these eventually in person I'm hoping to actually get on a plane to Australia as well in uh, September if they'll let me and uh, have a little in-person shindig with the family down under 
Um, but it'd be lovely to have like an in, uh, an in-person event or a few. But for now, we're going to do our lovely process. So I'm just going to invite you all to get comfy and just find your center. And if you want to lie down for this, you can. Or if you just want to be comfy in your chair, get nice and centered, just start to tune into the body. And we want to be really grounded for this. So you just want to really feel your physical body. The body is just as sacred as every other aspect of us, our beautiful temple, our beautiful house of wisdom. And as you tune into your body, I just want you to be really aware of your cells beginning to tingle with light, like a fizzing, like the, the frothing or bubbling of champagne or bubble bath like an excited fizzing and I want you to start to be aware or imagine see or sense a diamond rainbow light beginning to sparkle within your cells and sparkles of this diamond light going off within your DNA feeling the light of your soul your soul self your divinity being activated in the deeper steps of your physicality. And you might be aware of a sensation a little bit like a delicious electricity rippling through your body as the angelic frequency is activated within you. I want you to just imagine or intend that you're placing your conscious awareness, the center of your conscious awareness, at the very center of your being, of your body, in your physical body. Some of you might feel more centered within the heart. Some of you might feel more centered within the, uh, the belly. Some of you might want to ground in a little bit deeper into the lower belly or the sacral. But wherever feels like the most centered place for you. I normally feel more at home in my heart. And just be aware, see, sense, or imagine a brilliant spark of diamond light in that place, igniting from within. And just really imagine you can anchor your consciousness into that spark so that you ground into your own center. As you breathe into it, this is the most purest aspect of your soul self and your safe sanctuary. So if ever you feel overwhelmed or afraid or you need to come home to yourself, you can imagine that you're shrinking your consciousness right down into this spark of light and create a safe sanctuary for yourself there, drawing all your, your energy within and coming home to yourself. And it's okay to shrink down within your body sometimes to ground yourself, to come home, to protect yourself. And as you come home to you, just bringing and drawing in love, divine love and light and power and wisdom from the divine source above us, from our sun and all the sources of light, from all the stars in the universe and the multiverse and the cosmos, drawing light to you down through your crown into that spark of light in your center, activating it even more. And then bringing light up from the beautiful diamond core of beautiful Mother Earth, feeling light coming up like a geyser of light cascading upwards and drawing light up from all of the crystals of the earth, the frozen light of the crystals and all of the knowledge and the wisdom housed in those precious stones and the minerals of the earth. Feeling light being sent to you from all of the kingdoms of the earth and all of the kingdoms of the stars. And being aware of light from all of your soul selves, from all of your timelines, from every aspect, every facet of you, as you become aware of yourself as this multifaceted soul like an infinitely faceted crystal or diamond connecting to your own diamond core essence, drawing light to you and feel the spark of light within you becoming as a beautiful, brilliant sphere or sun within you. And as you breathe into it, it starts to open and expand outwards spherically 
through your whole energy field, through all your being, your bodies. And as it does so, it burns away and cleanses anything that doesn't need to be in your space at this time, releasing, dissolving, expanding, and it draws more light to you. It brings you home even more to yourself. And I want you to just imagine you can expand that sphere of light, like that inner sun right out around you so that it comes right out into your auric field. And you may want to just set the perimeter of this sphere just outside of your aura, or you might want to fill the whole room that you're in, but just set the edge of it to a, a distance from your physical body that feels safe and secure for you. And then we seal it in indigo, violet, and golden light, sealing our space. And then we call to us all of the angels and the archangels and the beings of light, and particularly beloved Lord Melchizedek, who is the 40th card in the deck, the overlighting consciousness of our universe, the logos of our universe. And he has a really beautiful, powerful, masculine, grandfatherly, protective energy. So we ask him to just overlight our space. And he brings you a chalice, a gift of spiritual nourishment. And just allow yourself to feel yourself being filled up with all the spiritual nourishment that you need, the support that you need, the love that you need. And just feel, see, or sense beloved Lord Melchizedek now coming in, standing behind you as a huge cosmic being, a bit like a big wizard with a beard of violet cloud, surrounded with all the colors of the rainbow and huge diamond iridescent wings. And feel the power of this being as he steps forward and begins to merge with your energy field and just feel yourself growing taller and bigger, expanding out. And just feel his wings opening out like a canopy of light. And as he does so, you are transported through the sigil wheel of Archangel Fire, through the central sigil. And you don't need to Remember what that sigil looks like. Just know that you're going on a journey through a portal of rainbow and gold light into a magnificent crystalline temple. You are transported directly to the angelic kingdom of light, which exists outside of space and time. And just find yourself in a huge crystalline floating temple somewhere in the cosmos and all of the angels and archangels beings of light gathering around you and in the center of this temple is a huge flame a column of fire and I want you to just be aware at the moment, as you gaze at this column of fire, this huge leaping flame in the very center of the temple, I want you to be aware of what color it is for you personally now. Because whatever color that fire is appearing to you is the color that you need in this very moment to receive the healing that you need. And it might change from one color to maybe two or three. So if there's a few colors that you want to work with, just be aware that these flames are offering you healing. And just feel yourself being drawn towards this fire now. And know that this fire will not harm you. It is a divine fire, the fire of transmutation, healing, transformation. I want you to imagine that you can step into this fire and feel your frequency raise up. Feel yourself being engulfed in the flame. And feel the colors dancing around you and the qualities of those colors. 
And as you absorb the colors that are being presented to you now, you might also be aware of light language in the form of symbols, letters, symbols, shapes, numbers, sounds and tones coming into your energy field as you receive a rainbow DNA activation, raising you up to the highest available timeline to you now. Feel your heart opening ever more. And feel emerging from within you your own angelic soul self as though an angel is stepping from your own heart expanding within you and holographically superimposed over your humanness. I want you to imagine you can really see and feel and experience yourself as this angelic being. This is your angelic soul self. It is who you are at the most angelic core of yourself. Be aware of the quality of the wings how tall you appear and just feel the beauty and the purity of who you are at this level, the magnificence of who you are at this level and the power of who you are at this level. And if you wish to know the name of your own angelic self, it might be the same name you have now. It might offer you a different name. Just know that whatever name you receive, usually the first name that drops into your mind will be the right name to know your angelic soul self by. Just hear this name like music in your own mind now. And feel the vibration of this name. And you might want to imagine that you can sing it to yourself. Now it's completely up to you whether or not you share this name with others. Sometimes it's very sacred to keep your spiritual name secret or you might want to share it. I just leave it up to you, but no, it will be personal to you and it's often a good idea to look up the meaning of any name you're given because it might have further messages for you. I want you to be aware of you and your angelic soul self really becoming one now so that you become this angel. You are the angel dancing in the flame. And I want you to be aware of the flame now turning pristine white, pure white. And your whole body being in essence and energy turning to white light as you become this angelic being of light. And just feel the energy and the vibration of this beautiful neutrality, this essence of unconditional love pouring through your being. And we're going to begin the process of attuning you to each of the color rays and the qualities of the Archangel Fire angels who have gifted us with this deck. So I want you to be very aware of 40 magnificent Archangels standing around you in a circle now. And each angel, as we call them forward, steps forward and gifts you with the gifts of their flame. So coming around you now, stepping forward towards the flame, holding in their hands vessels of black fire is Archangel Sariel and Zafkiel, helping you to traverse the dark night of the soul and to help you to create from chaos to find the light in the dark. And as they lift the vessels of fire to the central flame that you stand in, the whole flame around you turns black with iridescent rainbow colors pouring through it. And feel this black light in invoking your power, your safety, the creation aspect, 
It's a very womb-like black ray. Let yourself soak in this fire. Bring it into your cells. Feel your divine feminine power invoking. And feel any false walls or ceilings or thresholds dropping away from you now. Any old restrictions born of fear, born of doubt. Any old thought forms leaving you. Next, we call forward the angels of the russet red ray. Beautiful Adnakiel, the way shower. Cassiel, who brings the gift of serenity. Sandalphon, the keeper of the kingdom who helps to answer our prayers. And they each carry a vessel of russet red flame. And as they pour this flame into the central fire, the flame around you leaps with russet red fire. Take the russet red into your being. Feel yourself as the pioneer of your own life, forging your own path now, helping you to follow your own guidance, grounding you, helping you to feel at home here on the earth, belonging. Next, we call forward the archangels of the ruby red ray, Uriel, angel of salvation. Kameel, angel of justice. Haniel, who brings passion and poise. And feel, see, sense them with their vessels of flame, pouring the flame into the central fire as magenta red and ruby rays leap around you. I'm always very aware of the presence of Mary Magdalene when this flame comes in as well. So it's a deep ray of compassion, forgiveness, holding yourself in deep love. And as the flames around you leap, Archangels Shemuel, Ariel and Rigbiel, who bring love, strength of heart and compassion and the pink flame turning the central fire, the beautiful pink, all the spectrum of pink from fuchsia to pastel. And just take in all of this love, this compassion, the gift of the pink flame, absorbing it into you. And as you take in all of these flames, feel, see, sense your angelic self changing color into each color, your wings transforming into the flames of these colors. Next, the angels of the orange ray, Soket Hosey, the angel of balance, Rad Uriel, who brings attunement to our creativity, Barakiel, who comes with ultimate fulfillment, blessings. Feel, see, sense these angels emptying their vessels of orange flame into the central fire. Feel yourself turning orange. And I'm being given the image of a huge orange blazing phoenix coming up from the ashes and a powerful rebirth happening as you pursue your true desires. The orange also connecting you with sexuality, the creativity of the sacral chakra, saying yes to whatever it is that you need to birth in the world, whatever is uniquely yours. We call forward now Jophiel, the angel of joy, and Galgaliel, angel of power, the angels of the yellow ray who bring forth their vessels of yellow fire pouring it into that flame and feel yourself engulfed in that yellow ray like the joy of the sun. And as we call forward Raphael and Azrael, they bring healing and protection through any transitions, placing their vessels of fire into the flame. The flame turns green, beautiful, deep green, forest green to emerald green. Just feeling these colors, soaking in these colors, bathing in these colors, getting all of your cells and molecules and you might feel temperature changes, shifts in energy as these angels come in, healing on multiple levels, releasing on multiple levels. Feeling the activation now around the throat chakra, particularly the sphere of Gnosis, as beautiful Thule, the angel of cleansing, 
and Zachario, angel of graceful surrender, come forth with the turquoise ray and feel the flame around you turning brilliant turquoise. Feel an opening of the throat chakra, opening to higher levels of communication, opening your clairvoyance, clairsentience, claircognizance, connecting you with spirit, receiving more clarity in your communication with the angelic kingdom and all of your guides, your higher self. We now call forward Sakiel, Asariel, and Mikael, mighty Mikael, angels of wealth and charity, emotional expression, courage and protection as they bring forth the indigo blue ray. And feel that flame around you turning a deep indigo sapphire, sumptuous cobalt blue. Powerful protection coming around you now as you are gifted with Michael's sword of truth. Just feel this sword coming right down through your energy field, aligning you with your own truth, giving you the courage and the power to express yourself clearly, concisely, and lovingly. Next, we have Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, angel of mercy, and Archangel Ratziel, the angel of mystery and magic bringing forth the purple ray, powerful purple, a flame of alchemy, bringing forward the magic, knowing that you have the power to manifest your dreams and to, through love, gain dominion over the elemental kingdom here, to make your wishes and know that your wishes will be heard. Think about your core desires. And here we ask for an alignment to our true core desires releasing anyone else's desires or agendas, coming into the deepest truth of our desires and saying yes to our desires. The word desire has been almost made taboo on this planet in previous times. So calling that back, claiming that back, your right to have desire and to live out the pleasure of your desires on this beautiful earthly garden planet. Next, we call forth the keeper of the violet flame, Archangel Zadkiel, angel of freedom and transmutation, and beautiful Zuriel, who brings diplomacy and fair play. She holds the balance. And just feeling anything that needs to be dissolved away from you, letting go of it. If you know of any core patterns that you need to release into this flame, you can release it now as the whole fire around you turns brilliant violet. And next we call forward beautiful Gabriel who aligns us with our holy purpose. Salathiel, who is the archangel of devotion. And again, feel the ray around you turning white, bringing the white flame in. Feel the flames leaping off your crown, awakening within you the master, being your own guru, your own teacher. Stepping forward is beautiful Morabiel of the silver flame who brings you the power of reflection, allowing you to have deep love and devotion for yourself, even when you can see your own faults, even when the world is mirroring something back to you that maybe you don't want to be able to see, helping you to move through any obstacles with clarity, aligning you to the beautiful majesty of this silver aspect, this goddess aspect of your soul energy. Calling forth now mighty Metatron, angel of ancient wisdom, Yehudio, who aligns you to leadership and helps you in any endeavor, Karubiel, who brings illumination, and Akatriel, the archangel of glory, Feel, see, or sense the flames around you turning brilliant gold, igniting you, aligning you with the Christ light, but also that universal golden ray. It's one of the highest vibration colors you can work with. Feel yourself as the most sovereign being, connecting with your sovereignty now, your sovereign power. Deep level protection, safety, majesty, wisdom, 
activating within your brain the neural pathways of your brain, opening you to deeper wisdom, deeper knowing, trust and faith. We now call forth the twin Erin, the angels of absolute truth to help you align to your deepest core truth. And they bring with them the platinum ray. Platinum is one of the most high frequencies that we can access on this earth plane. And some of you might be aware of something called the platinum net. So we're going to invite the platinum net to sweep through our energy fields now, gathering up anything that doesn't need to be here, anything that is not aligned with our deepest core truth, anything internal or external. I'm feeling this platinum ray raising up your frequency, preparing you to connect with the clear light of the divine. Feel, see or sense now your heart being weighed against that feather. But just allow yourself to look deeply within yourself and to be prepared to have the courage to see the truth of yourself and your own behaviours, your own actions. And when we can take ownership of every part of ourselves, and love ourselves in it. We can release anything, including behaviors that is no longer serving us. We now invite forward beautiful Christiel, the angel of peace, and Tahariel, who activates you to the rainbow child within you. And each person on this planet is going through many levels of evolution to bring us home to our divinity and this rainbow activation really helps to bring you into alignment with that highest aspect of yourself remembering that you are a divine child that you deserve love you deserve to be held you deserve to have your needs met even your most basic human needs you deserve to be met with compassion and you deserve to dance in the beauty of beloved Mother Gaia. And you've come here at this time to help in this process. And you are a warrior of light as such. So just give yourself the permission to experience all of the beauty and the colour and the pleasure of being alive on this beautiful earth plane and to create beauty in your life. And finally, we invite forward Sophia, bringing unconditional love, our beautiful divine mother, Shekinah, and finally, Lord Melchizedek, who aligns us with our highest ascension path available at this time. Feel the light and the flame around you turning to diamond brilliance containing every single color of the rainbow, including cosmic colors now around you. You might see colors that feel brighter than you've ever experienced them before. And again, you may hear music and tones seeing fire letters and light language. And I'm just being asked to um, open to channel a light language activation. So I wasn't expecting to do this tonight, but we'll just see what comes through. So just allow yourself to bathe in all the colors and the flames and the frequencies coming through.
Feel now the light around you turning from flame to a gentle mist and the diamond light softening into a beautiful pearlescent light surrounding you like a beautiful cloak or a veil or a cocoon of this beautiful pearl flame, pearl light, softening, bringing within you the deepest sense of peace that you can imagine and just feel this soft peace enveloping you, surrounding you, holding you and bringing you home. And as you are wrapped in this gossamer, pearlescent softness, this sweetness, bring your own angel wings around you to hold yourself, feel yourself being closed and cocooned. Feel your angelic soul self sitting back within you and just merging with you, dissolving within as you become completely attuned to this angelic presence that you are. Feel, see and sense yourself becoming your human self again, but somehow deeply changed from within. Softening into the self-love. Feel yourself now stepping from that central flame and be aware of all the archangels around you bowing deeply as they welcome you into their midst, knowing that you are a part of this kingdom, that you belong here with the angels, but you also belong down in your earthly life. And so just imagine that you're bidding all of these beautiful angels farewell, but knowing that you can always come back here and in fact, they will walk with you every day of your life. And before you go, think of one desire that you wish for, that you've wanted, that you've longed for in your life and make your request to the angelic kingdom. And if it be for your highest good, then it shall be so. Let it go here. See yourself traveling back through the portal of the sigil wheel. See the colors, the gold and the rainbow swirling around you, the symbols. Find yourself traveling back into your physical form. Be aware of yourself sitting or laying where you were when we began this process, this meditation. And just feel yourself coming right back home to your physical body. Start to be aware of the weight of your body on the chair. Be aware of the clothes on your skin. 
temperature of the air around you. Breathe all of this peace, all of these gifts, all of this love into every cell, molecule, and atom of your being. Bring your awareness back into your center, your heart or your center, wherever you found that spark of light when we first began. Center yourself back in your body into this light, your soul's light. And then call to you all of your light. Draw your consciousness in, allowing your consciousness to shrink back down, becoming body shaped. And bringing the gold and the indigo and the violet and just outlining your whole body so that you become safely cocooned and sealed back into your body. Feel a big physical 3D diamond coming into your energy field now to seal your space, a diamond shield around you with the hardness of the diamond on the outside, the ability to be mirrored, to transmute anything, but to allow you to shine as brightly as you need to in the world as the beautiful light bringer that you are. And then we seal our fields and just be aware of your feet. Make sure that you're nice and grounded. Bring your attention down into the lower belly, into the feet. We've brought through some very high frequencies tonight. So just make sure that you feel nice and grounded and centered. And if you want to, um, you can just leave now. If you feel you want to just go and rest and sleep and relax, you're more than welcome to just um, leave the meeting whenever you feel ready. Um, for those of you who would like to stay and share, I'm going to stick around for a little while just to see if anyone would like to share any feedback. Um, but just know that the final piece we're being gifted with is a beautiful golden crown being placed on our heads, a symbol of our sovereignty, a golden key over your heart as protection. And this key will open any door in your consciousness that you need for your healing. It's a key to your multidimensionality. And they're placing... Um, crystalline golden slippers on our feet. I feel a bit like Cinderella, a reminder that wherever we walk, we walk on sacred land. And we bring our sacredness with us everywhere we go. So I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for joining me tonight. I hope that you're all feeling good. And um, I just want to just um, send you all love. And the final thing is just to radiate a beam of your soul's light spherically out into the world around you so that this healing um, goes out to whoever needs it and also will help to shift the vibration of the dynamic in your relationship with anyone or anything you should encounter to a higher frequency and vibration. Thank you so much. <laughs>